So this is a picture of just a few of the very many angels that have gone on um, that we've lost from HLH, but we want to ride for them today. Down here in this corner is Carly, and this over here is Liam, and in the middle, of course, is Matthew, and this is our Andrew, and up here is Annie. And these are just a few. I mean, we could have posters and posters, unfortunately, which is why we're riding. I find a kind of peace and restored belief in man when I witness the kind of strength, sincere desires, and love of total strangers to pull together for something bigger than themselves. The physical challenges they endure on this journey are just a small part of the larger experience they are all sharing. This ride isn't just about raising money or awareness. It's about inspiring people to feel empowered, to do more, feel more, and just care more about those we share this planet with. We uh, have a lot of people out here getting ready to ride their bicycles 700 miles over seven days across five states in memory of my sons, Matthew and Andrew. Um, for all the children who are no longer with us because of HLH, the families and the children that are currently fighting this horrible immune disorder, and for those who will unfortunately get diagnosed in the future, we're out here trying to uh, pay it forward and um, make a difference in this fight. And if we can just save one child, it'll all be worth it. literally nonstop. I've cried some, um, but it's just been awesome, you know, and I feel like these are the kinds of things that you really, you really learn about yourself when you do things that are outside of your comfort zone. So you just don't know what you're made of until you really push yourself. So um, I'm thrilled that I came and I'm so thankful for everybody's support and, and help every single step and mile of the way. And um, yeah, it's just, just really can't put it into words actually. Blue sky, sun's just a little up. Oh, I'm good. excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Good luck today. Thank you. Very much. Good to see you. You couldn't find a better starting spot, I don't think. This is one of the coolest things that's probably ever gone on around the hospital as far as a leisure activity that you can take your, your job outside of your just your job. Do something a little more personal for the people that you work with every day. And they've inspired me and I hope that this bike ride is inspiring others. So last September my younger brother, um, who was 36 at the time, uh, went into the hospital in New York City um, and a week later was diagnosed with HLH and we were transferred from um, New York City to Cincinnati um, about six weeks later. He went into the hospital at 192 pounds. When we got to Cincinnati, he weighed 121, so it yeah. took a, just a beat down on his body. I have the best brother in the whole world, really. And he just keeps on. I mean, he's, I think he's more passionate about, about helping others that, that, that are experiencing um, you know, this disease. And uh, he is, it's just become one of his, his, his passions of, of life. So I'll tell you, this morning, on the first leg, I was thinking to myself, why am I doing this? This is not gonna work. And, uh, but then I had to remind myself that it's just one pedal stroke at a time, and I motivated myself to keep going. I'm thinking about how my sister and I really need to make up. We've been in a big standoff for a while. <laughs> That's actually what I was just, just really? daydreaming about. Because there's something about when you break yourself down physically. You know, there's just, there's, there's something to it. When you break yourself down to those base bits, then you have no choice but to kind of reassemble. And it's a kind of, I suppose, a spiritual opportunity to 
reassemble the way you like, which is what I like about endurance sports, truthfully, is I like sort of the breaking down. I don't know if you've noticed, but it all seems like we're all kind of, besides beyond HLH, we're all kind of the same kind of people. I think we all have the sense of humor. We all have the um, need to be around each other and to give each other support and love. And you can just feel the, the intensity, I think, and the passion that everybody shares. Not just about the bike ride and not just about HLH, but also just about life in general. I think, oh, you get all choked up. <laughs> anyway, it's very cool. It's just a special thing to be a part of. I'm doing this because my daughter Aspen was diagnosed with HLH in August of last year. And uh, she had her, her bone marrow transplant in January and has been inpatient at Cincinnati Children's for the last eight months. Just a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Pretty damn touching. Everybody's got their story, you know. And everybody out here you know, contributing what they can and being part of it. It's just very cool, very cool. <laughs> Father, thanks so much for a great day yesterday. Thanks for sustaining our bodies. Thanks for taking care of us. Lord, we uh, think especially of Bogdan this morning and his family. Lord, would you just um, provide for them financially the things that they need? Uh, God, their story is just unbelievable to me. And, and, and so touch his body, heal his body, and uh, um, make today the best day he's had in a long, long, long time. Keep us safe today. Um, let us have some fun and uh, give us some extra strength in our legs. Love you, God. Thanks. Amen. All right. You know, my wife and I, we were a great team. And we were a great team before the boys got sick, and we still are today. And. It's, it's just made all the difference in the world. And you know, I think the divorce rate for parents who lose a child, I've heard, is around 98%. And I'm sure there is no number for parents who lose two children. You know, and, and a lot of people ask me, how are you still married? And I tell them, how can I not be? I saw the amazing job that, that Kristen did in taking care of these two wonderful sons of ours. And so I love her that much more because of what a great mother she, she is and was to them. There's no magic words to heal the pain and there's no magic book or pill or time. Um, I, I said it, I've said it a lot. I think figuring it out is like learning, just coming to understand that you now have a disability and you learn how to deal with it. You learn how to manage it, which means you learn how to allow yourself the time to grieve when you need to grieve, but the reality is I'm not the only person who's lost a child or a loved one, and I won't be, and, and, and so it doesn't give me permission to just hole up in a ball and like give up. And so, you know, I use my kids as my motivation. They never gave up. And so there are days, of course, we all have them, regardless of our situation of feeling sorry. I think you have to just make sure you find the balance. Both of us obviously have some Pretty big inspiration out here, riding for our sons. Uh, they can always feel it, right here. 
on either side of me. And I have, they're always with me. The rashes are right here in this pendant. So they're with me wherever I go. HLH is, um, uh, it's still, a, it's a bit of a mystery, but in uh, basic terms as we understand, it's uh, regulation of the immune system gone awry. We have built-in controls of the immune system so that after it takes care of an infection, it has to turn itself down so that it does not cause collateral damage to our own organs and tissues. And if left untreated, this uh, uncontrolled inflammatory attack on our organs can severely damage them, including proving fatal. And because it's such a dangerous disease that you require a bone marrow transplant in order to uh, essentially stop it. So just like children that are born with essentially no immune system, right, in order to survive, they need a bone marrow transplant. In the case of HLH, you have an immune system that doesn't know when to quit, uh, and for that reason you also need a bone marrow transplant to sort of uh, reestablish normal balance. When, when the when I can't walk in outside, I can't walk without boots. That's right, you need shoes outside, right? Yeah. Right. You know, up to this point, the treatment we have is pretty rotten in terms of what it does to the rest of our systems, our kidneys, our liver, our lungs, our heart. Um, and it's a hard conversation to have with parents beforehand. You, you, you tell them, this is not meant to scare you, but it's going to scare you. So we're going to be talking about some horrible side effects. Um, and, and that is getting getting better so that's what I hope that's what I hope people get from this and, and, and hopefully they know uh, and come to realize that in order to really get to that pinnacle you know where we want to be it's going to require some help. Currently a bone marrow transplant is the best chance these kids fighting HLH have for winning the battle. Finding a perfect match though is difficult and requires volunteers to be part of the bone marrow registry. Why'd you decide to become a donor? Uh, like most people, I had a friend that uh, diagnosed with leukemia at age 34. Uh, her only hope was a transplant. A match was never found. She died about eight months later. And then a year after that, I got the call as a perfect statistical match for a 16-year-old kid. All I knew about her was 16-year-old female, acute lymphoblastic leukemia patient. All she knew about me was 40-year-old male. That sounded horrible and they were talking about me. So, wrote her a letter, wrote her parents a letter, they wrote back. Uh, the letters changed my life. I got perspective from a young girl that was facing the gravity of her life and I had been blessed to go through most of my life without a whole lot of heavy lifting. So, uh, yeah. Now it's paying it forward, dismissing the myths about the process and encouraging people to get on the registry. Simplest thing you can do. All right, have a good day at school tomorrow, okay? I know. All right, be good. I love you. I was an athlete, I had a full soccer scholarship to uh, the University of Charleston in West Virginia. And then my last semester of grade 12, in, the, in February of 2008, I, uh, they, they thought I had the flu and stuff. Went into hospital, was put in isolation, and uh, they took blood numbers and everything was just in the drain. I had no, no platelets, no, no nothing. They rushed him down to ICU um, and didn't know whether he'd make the day. I was finally diagnosed with HLH. So there's two paths. You can either go the bone marrow path or you can do the medication path. So obviously they try the medication path first. So it's the chemo, it's the steroids, that kind of stuff. And they, it would go away. And then as they start dropping down the medications again, it would just flare right back up. We were airlifted October 29th down to Cincinnati Children's Hospital where we met our saint, Dr. Jordan, and all the staff at Cincinnati Children's. And then December 13th of 2008, I got my new cells put into me and started growing from there and then seven months later so april six seven months of so april i finally got home can't do as much but 
that's his, that's what life has given him, and he's taken that attitude and um, tried to spread the word of, about HLH, uh, and and you know through all of his friends, uh, through his band, um, through his uh, trip across the Canada and the U.S. last year, trying to raise awareness visiting his donor in uh, Sacramento, California. Strangers become family in an instance. A young man from Canada meets a young mother from Citrus Heights for the first time. <laughs> so, I don't know, I kind of look at life and there's gonna be obviously more bumps for me, like I've had a hip replacement, my knees are shot, my left one's going, my elbow's locked, but it's all, it's all under being alive, you know? So last night I did sleep in the RV, which I've always wanted to sleep in an RV, and actually I tried to convince my parents to sell our house when I was little and get an RV. Now I realize that would have been an awful idea. But it was really fun, and I figured since this is 2015 and this is probably 1915, it was safer to sleep in here. It was actually really cozy. So it was fun. It was a win-win. I stopped buying product for my hair about five years ago. It's but I've got six things of product dedicated to my butt today. So yeah, it's all about maintenance. As I've had time to just interact with this community over the last year, I just, like, I feel people's desperation. I feel their hurt. I mean, I was there too. We were, we were just there a year ago, just not knowing what to do. And so, you know, for me, it takes a, um, it takes a small amount of time and energy to just, to just think about them and remember them and pray for them. And, and, and I mean, this is a great place to do it. I got nothing else to do, right? Just pedal and pray. For me to be here and to meet these guys and and uh, and to be able to do it with my brother, it's just it's it's amazing. It's, this has been one of the best experiences of my life. I don't. I was telling Justin actually Bye. in the Bye. RV yesterday, after receiving one of the text messages that was super inspiring, um, I think maybe it was a therapy session with Aspen, um, one of the therapists had sent it to me just to inspire us to keep going and that she was doing great in the hospital while we were out riding our bikes. You always wish that there was something more that you could do and I feel like throughout this whole ride that Justin and Kristen have absolutely given us the opportunity to take it a step farther, to take it away from your job, 
and make it personal. And um, yeah, I feel empowered. People are inspiring. Um, it's amazing to see what people can do when they all come together for a good cause. And um, I do feel like I'm making a difference. We are making a difference. Good morning from Florence, Alabama. We'll be riding 114 miles today. We have 6,638 feet of elevation gain. So we are going to be climbing a lot of hills today. And that's why we're dedicating today the toughest day so far of the to the children that are no longer with us. Today I really thought a lot about why I was riding and it, it made me feel really emotional. You know, I, I love my patients and families. You know, there's no such thing as not being attached to people or keeping detachment. I mean, there are professional boundaries that we keep, but but you still, you fall in love with them. You fall in love with the families, you fall in love with the patients. You're present for extremely intimate moments in their lives, and it's, it's such an honor and a privilege to be there with them, but it's also really, really hard. I get to know them, you know, gradually, gradually over time because bone marrow transplant's not a fast process. And um, some of our patients die, and it's, it's excruciating for me to watch a, a family lose their child. I'm a mom too. You know, I think it's more about what I don't say sometimes. Just being there with people. And, and there's times when, I, when I've been present for, for a death and hardly said much. And then when it's all over and I'm, I'm walking people to the door, they say, thank you so much for being with us. And I think to myself, I didn't do anything. It's, it's hard to explain just to be there, just to be there to answer their questions, to be there um, no matter how bad their emotional pain is. I, I don't leave, I stay with them, and I stay present to their pain. And I, and I think that that is so, it's such an honor and a privilege and it's so hard, but it, it means so much to families to know that, that we are gonna walk with them all the way through and to make those last moments that they have with their child as meaningful as we can. After seeing so many children suffer um, and go through so much in the hospital and still not make it, this is, this is uh, not just a job for me. I, this has become very personal now. If I want to make uh, sure that we have the funds, we have the awareness for this disease, I have to contribute and participate in it uh, as a direct participant and not just a bystander or a beneficiary f by the efforts of the parents. Um, so that is why I take this as a personal challenge um, and want to do as much as I can um, to improve the lives of these children and move this research forward. You know, the first day you asked me, what do you think about, you know, not on the first day, and it's like, oh, I'm thinking about work, you know, because that's where I was at the day before. And now you're, you know, four days in, you really, now you start breaking down, right? And you start getting at the good stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you just, you learn so much about yourself. And you just see things and other people and everything in new ways. And that's kind of the cool part. So, I mean, I do feel on the physical side, I feel like I trained. I'm, I'm happy I put in the hours. It's still, you know, that part is every bit the challenge. But um, the emotional stuff is all, it's all good. That's a challenge too, but yeah, it's good. By the end of today, we will have done 475 of the 700 miles. There aren't a whole lot of people in the world can say they've ridden a bicycle 475 miles over four days, four consecutive days. So I'm very proud of this group. They, they've really actually uh, exceeded my expectations.
friends who and colleagues who donated it, donated money to the ride. His one message was, surprise yourself. And uh, so I'm hoping that's what I'm gonna do. Scenery, loving every minute of it. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> I've known Justin and Kristen for a long time and uh, actually Justin and I were roommates at one point when we lived together in Dallas and uh, he's opened his home and they've been wonderful, just tremendously great friends and uh, I felt like I wanted to I wanted to pedal for, for a higher cause, for, for a bigger reason. This is recovery day. No, no it's not fun. It's not a recovery day. It's 70 miles, no shade, and it's like this. So if you think that's recovery... What's it like again? <laughs> Weather. Those roads were a little scary. They were a little scary. You know? And some of those hills, you know, in this motorhome were a little tough. I'm sure on the bikes it was much easier. <laughs> Good morning from Bardstown, Kentucky. Well, yesterday was supposed to be a recovery day. Was it a recovery day? No! Is Kentucky flat? No! no. There were a lot of hills out there <laughs> yesterday. It was a long day on the road. So today we are riding the 91 miles all the way to Carrollton, Kentucky. Marianne Hegner, a chaplain from Cincinnati Children's Hospital is going to tell us a little bit about the darling little girl that we're riding for today. Today we are riding for sweet little Sophia. She's eight months old and she joined us at Cincinnati Children's at two and a half months old from her home in New Jersey to be treated for HLH by Dr. Jordan. And she's a sweet, sweet little girl that I had the pleasure of meeting last week when we blessed her, her boost. We gave her some more cells. And we are so happy to be riding for her today. We're gonna, every pedal stroke is gonna be hope that her cells grow so that her immune system come, can come back and she can be fully healthy. So today we're riding for Sophia and all the little children that should be out riding their bicycles. We're riding for them. Once again, I want to thank Adrian Mills from Nova Immune and their sponsorship of uh, helping make all of this happen. So, here we go. Another 91 miles today. Team 700 miles to hope. Let's go. Woo! Um, you know, when you, you got your best buddy, Who's lost? Uh, who's lost two children? You know, the why becomes easy. Um, you know, I started talking to Justin once, right when all this stuff went down. Didn't have any idea what HLH was, and neither did he. And um, as everything started happening, and as you sit there and you're just listening and try to be there for your buddy, it was weird because it sounded like he was in physical pain. And uh, come to find out, he probably was if you lose two kids it's, it hurts all the way through so um, that's why I do it right I mean you got to try to be there for your friend anytime I talk about them I use the term heroic because uh, they're heroic folks my wife and I quickly learned that helping others was what ultimately helped us and so we started this foundation in their memory to help the families who would be following in our footsteps. And it was just what, three, four months after Matthew passed away, and it was the one year anniversary of Andrew's death that um, it was Labor Day weekend, and my wife and I on that Friday night got an email from a friend of ours who's an OB in St. Louis, and her son and Matthew were in the same preschool class. And this email said, 
A 15 year old girl walked into my practice today and she's eight and a half months pregnant and she's hid the entire pregnancy from her mom. But she's decided that she wants to give her baby up for adoption. And I told her your story and she wants to talk to you. And ultimately it was the following Thursday when we got a phone call at nine o'clock that night. Um, and this 15 year old girl's mom said, okay, my daughter and her boyfriend have chosen you to be the parents of their child. And oh, by the way, she's in labor right now. I definitely owe it all to Justin for keeping his heart open to adopting. I was, I just didn't think I had anything left. I thought after they were gone, I was done. I wanted to be done, but I can't imagine my life without William now. We went back to that hospital and took William Clayton Aiken home with us. And um, then my wife and I kept asking, where did you come from? <laughs> How did we get you? We were obviously blessed in the most miraculous way with William. And so I realize now William is not mine. He doesn't belong to me. I have him as a gift to love and to guide and to nurture as long as God will allow me. And I'm hoping a long time. We really don't have anything. No one belongs to us. Nothing belongs to us, which is why it's so important to be a part of the bigger picture. I think, you know, kind of what I've learned, so. 640 miles are down, 60 to go. I think it's been a spiritual journey. It's been a, a physical challenge and um, an emotional journey. So I use the word journey because I think that it's not just um, a ride. It's not just 700 miles to hope, but it's um, a journey that you're on with these people um, just to, to get through every day, every hour, every pedal stroke, um, every lunch, every story that is shared. Being away from my kids was hard, and I think, you know, being around everybody and uh, um, not just talking about kids, but also the struggles, you know, you, you also want to realize that you don't want to take your own life for granted either. Good morning from Carrollton, Kentucky. Today is day seven of our 700 miles to Hope Ride. So we've now ridden our bicycles across five states and we'll be riding 64 miles today to the front doors of Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Today's a very, very special day as we are riding for the survivors. Well, obviously we wanna say thank you to every employee at Cincinnati Children's Hospital that works tirelessly to help these kids and their families from the minute they present with this awful disease to the minute they get to leave and go on and start a new chapter. So this is, again, just a small picture, but I want to point out a few that we are, we're riding for. Um, this is Mia Bell up here, and we have William and Maya and Ashton, Ashton I can't see, and Brayton and Hannah and Mason. And then, of course, we have our very own Sean Felto right here. And we've got Aaron Peterson, who's not in the group, but he's Happy's brother, who is also a survivor. So there's so many more, and this is why we ride, because um, there are lots of kids that make it, and we want to see more and more kids make it every day. So all of the money raised before, during, and after our ride will go to support the HLH Center of Excellence at Cincinnati Children's Hospital and their four core priorities of research, awareness, family support, and clinical care. So thank you for helping us write a check today for $350,000. We truly appreciate your help. We ride because we have hope. Hope that we can inspire a few families that are currently fighting. Uh, hope that there won't be another HLH funeral. And hope that with every little pedal stroke, we're getting just to that much closer to ending HLH. So team, ready for one last day out there on the road? Yeah! yeah. I'm really excited. Talk 
after last night and everybody's doing good, so it's always reassuring. Yeah, it's nice to kind of get away from the, the hospital for a while and take a break. But I'll be glad to get back and see everybody. Bogdan, the little boy from Romania that we dedicated day two to, um, receiving the message yesterday from the hospital saying that Bogdan told his therapist that they're out there riding 100 miles from me today, so I want to do something for them. And they put these pedals at the end of Bogdan's bed, and he rode 100 pedal strokes forwards and 100 pedal strokes backwards yesterday. What does that do to your heart? The whole trip, it makes the whole trip worth it, right then and there. For him, to spur him to go extra in therapy that day, to get the strength back in his legs, um, it's an amazing feeling. It really is. And then we got a message last night, a picture of the Aspen little girl we dedicated day one to. And her dad, Travis, is out here riding with us. Aspen, in her therapy session yesterday, was riding this Thomas the Tank Engine that happens to be her favorite toy um, in the therapy rooms. Well, that was our son Matthew's Thomas the Tank Engine that we donated to the hospital after he passed away. And um, it was an amazing feeling. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. Can't wait to see all the great kids, all the people at Cincinnati Children's. It's gonna be an awesome day. Awesome day.
sound The ocean waving endlessly To all the tourists of the town The smell of flowers in the air Is so sweet you can't deny And if you want to go with me But I'll try Looks like I can squeeze you in Anytime, anywhere Let me be the coolest summer wind Blowing through your hair Let's make a storybook Jump inside, live our lives You're the only